Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis with another Codex Analysis Astro Militarum video. Today we are taking a look at the Elite section. Um, if you missed any other parts, uh, the links will be in the description, so make sure to go and watch those if there's a section you wish to catch up on or you just have missed anything from the series. So, today we're talking, as I said, about the Elite section. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Imperial Guard Elites. I think they're a bit too specialist. A lot of Elite sections are well balanced, have a lot of options, and generally can be used. Uh, units that come to mind are Orc Knobs, um, and units like that that can be used as technically shooter units, but can also whack uh, Crisis Battle Suits, which can do just about anything. Um, a lot of Eldar units like Fire Dragons and Striking Scorpions. The Imperial Guard is a lot, lot weaker. In fact, I don't think, unless you really built around them, some of these units could be used almost at all. But maybe I'm just being a little bit melodramatic. So the first unit is the Ogrins. Um, they are 40 points each, and you start with two Ogrins and one Ogrin Bonet for 130 points as your base squad. Uh, an Ogrin is weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 3, strength and toughness 5 with 3 wounds, initiative 2, 3 attacks, leadership 6, and a 5 plus armor save. He's armed with a ripper gun, frag grenades, and flak armor. A ripper gun is 12 inch range, strength 5, AP nothing, assault 3, which is an absolute pile of garbage. He may as well not have a gun with a gun like that. Uh, what don't I like about Ogrins? I mean, reading that stat line, they are really, really good. Strength and toughness 5, weapon skill 4, 3 wounds, nice and sticky, lots of attacks, decent enough weapon skill I suppose, but they're not very survivable. I mean, everything that lands a wound is a wound because they're wearing flak armour. It takes one salvo of bolt guns really to kill an ogrin, because they're only wounding on 5s, ignoring armour. And 3 wounds doesn't go all that far, but the main issue lies in their leadership. Their leadership 6, which is unacceptable. That means that you have more than half a chance. Your average dice roll will be a fail, because average 2d6 is 7. Um, the Ogrin Bonehead gives you an extra attack and that critical leadership. He makes them leadership 7. Keep your Ogrin Bonehead alive at any cost, almost. Because you get rid of him and you've lost all your leadership chances, basically. It's just gone. They have Hammer of Wrath, they are stubborn, and they're also very bulky, which means I believe they take up three transport capacity. Uh, stubborn is a blessing, because with that low leadership, you cannot afford to take any more modifiers. And you can take up to 10 in a squad, uh, 40 points each, so a full strength squad will cost you 410 points, which is a lot. Um, the squad may take a Chimera or Torox as a dedicated transport. Now to do this, to take a Chimera, your squad must be no bigger than four. Take a Torox, your squad must be no bigger than three. I would actually recommend taking a Torox because um, that leaves you with one transport space to take a character. And if you're going to run Ogrins, you must include a character. That being a Lord Commissar, a regular Commissar, or a Priest. Whichever you take is up to you. Personally, I would actually recommend a Priest because they are fearless, so your Ogrins will be fearless. They don't have summary execution, and they can pack a plasma gun. Yes, you don't get a power weapon like you would if you could take a commissar or a lord commissar, but you're not going to be shooting your own guys, and you actually get hatred, which is useful for getting extra attacks to hit in that first round of melee. Ogrins were the stereotypical um, big heavy guard elite unit. They've now added another one, the Volgrins. These guys cost 5 points extra per model, so 45 points each, and 145 points for a basic squad of two guys and a bonehead. Which means that a full strength squad, um, by my maths, is 465 points, I think. 465, which is a huge investment, which is why I would never recommend you go that big. Uh, they are identical stat lines, but they have a 4 plus save because they are armed with carapace armor. Never underestimate the value of a 4 plus save over a 5 plus save, trust me. Um, they're armed with frag grenades, and their weaponry is a grenadier gauntlet and a slab shield. Now, a grenadier gauntlet is nothing special. It's 12-inch range, strength 4 AP 6, assault 1 blast. It's basically a slightly longer-ranged frag grenade, is one of the best ways I can put it. 
what they also have are slab shields. Now, these are quite interesting. Uh, if a model with a slab shield is in base contact with one or more models with a slab shield from the same unit, it gets plus one armor save. Furthermore, if a target is partially obscured, friend or foe, from the fire is viewed by at least one slab shield or one model with one, it gets plus one cover save. So these guys are ideally suited to standing right up at the front with, in essence, power armor as long as they remain in base contact and just being incredibly tanky. And if they try and shoot past them, instead of just having a 5 plus save for an intervening unit, they'll have a 4 plus save as their cover, which is excellent. I think that's really good. And a slab shield gives you a lot of value. And this is generally the way I run them. The alternative is you can run them with a power maul and a brute shield. Uh, this costs 15 points extra per model, meaning each model costs 60 points. Bear that in mind. But you get a power maul, which means that your ogrins will hit at strength 7 AP4, which is very, very powerful. And the brute shield gives them an invuln. It does mean you take a little bit of a nerf to the saves, but you do get an invuln. So a brute shield gives you a 5 plus invuln. In addition, you also get rerolls to wound with your Hammer of Wrath. Um, don't take the Hammer of Wrath rerolls as being much value, but you are going to get um, probably rerollable threes in most cases, or even rerollable twos. So it gets a little bit of value, assuming you actually remember to do your Hammer of Wrath rolls like I don't. Um, the 5 plus invuln is great. I mean, Ogrins with an invuln is a lot, lot tankier than Ogrins without. But you do mean that your armor save goes from a 4 plus to a 3 plus, meaning that on any occasion where you're not required to use your invuln, your armor save is actually worse, and you don't provide the cover save bonus to units behind you. You still also must attach a character, so I guess having the invuln... It depends. Is having a 33% a 66% chance to save all the time unless you get hit with an AP3 weapon, or a 50% chance all the time and a 66% chance when you don't, which is better value? I guess you have to put more value into the power more, which is probably worth the 15 points on its own to strike at strength 7, AP4, have concussive to allow you to strike first in the next round. Hard to say. I prefer the Grenadier Gauntlet loadout, but I can see a lot of value in the power more layout as well just not my preference um honestly i would never take ogrins though bulgrins are by far a superior unit in my opinion ogrins die far far too easily for a five plus save compared to a four plus it's worth paying that extra five points and you get all the war gear to go with it right next unit ratlings oh ratlings they are 10 points a model and their stat line is roughly on par with um Oh god, I'm trying to think. I want to say Gretchen, but it's slightly better than Gretchen. Weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 4, strength 2, toughness 2, 1 wound, initiative 4, 1 attack, leadership 6, 5 plus save. That is the worst stat line in the whole codex, bar none. That is the worst stat line in the codex. Um, for that you get flak armor, las pistol, and a sniper rifle. Now BS4 sniper rifles are good, this is why veterans are better units to take with snipers. They also have stealth all the time, infiltrate to allow them to set up in a really good spot and get some nifty cover saves, and shoot sharp and scarper. Say that after you've had one too many to drink. And what it means is they get the shoot and run order all the time. So they can shoot and then run, which, if you're clever, means you can basically get around the fact you can't move to fire them efficiently. You can stay count in position shoot and then run to wherever your next firing post is admittedly it's not great but it also means if you are moving because you have to you can move to your next position and if you're a bit short snap shoot and then run which is really good value so i do think shoot sharp and scarper is the only rule that makes rattlings really viable over um veterans with snipers who cost about the same they cost maybe one point less so I personally don't like Rattlings. I think they're really cool as a narrative thing, and I think they could do some really awesome stuff for you, but I just don't think they're a viable unit in this codex, particularly with um, some of the other elite choices and just generally the army. If you've got 100 points spare, I wouldn't put it into 10 Rattlings. The other unit, next unit is Word Vein Psychers, formerly known as the Psyker Battle Squad. Uh, they now cost 12 points a model, so 60 points base, and uh, you can have up to 10 in a squad. Start with 5. 
They are weapon skill 2, BS 3, strength 2, toughness 3, 1 wound, initiative 3, 1 attack, leadership 8, and a 5 plus save. Which is slightly better than a Ratlings. Slightly. Um, they have just a pistol and close combat weapon to go with their flak armor. And they are a Brotherhood of Psychers, only level 1 though. They generate from Biomancy, Divination, Pyromancy, and Telekinesis. Which, if I'm right, are the same disciplines that a Primaris Psyker generates from. I know they don't get Telepathy. Uh, yeah, Primaris Psychers generate from the same laws. So the only way to get telepathy is astropaths in this army. But I don't personally like telepathy that much anyway. Um, would I take a squad of word vein psychers over a, um, a primary psyker? Honestly, no. Because admittedly, you have a level one psyker. You have basically 10 level one psychers who just cast one power between them compared to one two wound level one psyker for a primaris psyker uh, or a level two one and that extra level for the same cost means you're getting more powers and you are generating more warp charge dice so i used to quite like the old powers of the word vein psychers the bat psycho battle squad i don't like these plus they've lost the overseer who used to give them a way of mitigating perils I, in the old time they would be only lose d3 to perils of the warp without the overseer they'd all die i don't know what the rules are concerning brotherhood of psychers and perils because i haven't used them but i think they're slightly better and they have more versatility but they're slightly worse in that they've lost their overseer and the actual powers they had were pretty powerful if you took a big squad and then we come to the meat the big one the militarum tempestus my old favorites um each uh, military and Tempestus Platoon, because you now get platoons of Tempestus Stormtroopers now, must include between one and three squads of Scions, Skians, whatever you wish to call them, and you are allowed one to three squads of them, and may include a command squad. A command squad is not compulsory, which means if you just got one squad of Stormtroopers from your old Guard Codex, you can still just run them as one squad of Stormtroopers. And you also have access to the um, Tempestus Command if you have the points and the models. So, a command squad is 85 points, and it gives you four Tempesta Scions, Scions, Skians, whatever, and a Tempesta Prime. Now, a Scion is basically a veteran in carapace armor. Three, four, two threes, one, three, one, seven, four plus. A Tempesta Prime is weapon skill four, ballistic skill four, strength three, toughness three, two wounds, initiative four, two attacks, leadership nine, and a four plus save, which is sort of halfway between a platoon commander and a company commander. So I think this guy is probably the best um, order issuing that isn't going to cost you victory points type of guy, because obviously he costs you no victory points if he gets killed to slay the warlord, but he's tough enough to actually take a hit. Um, they all have carapace armor, obviously. And they're armed with hotshot las guns. Now these are basically las guns with AP3. And until you've faced a space marine army, you have no idea how much value you can get out of AP3 las guns compared to AP nothing ones. Um, frag and crack grenades are standard, so you actually get crack grenades, which is also useful. Uh, your prime has a close combat weapon and a las pistol because he doesn't like las guns for some reason. And they have the clarion vox net as a special rule. And this means that all Tempestus units, I think it's just from the same platoon, within 18 inches of your Tempesta Prime, use his leadership. Um, is it just for orders? I'll just check. Uh, for any fear, morale, or pinning checks. So that basically means that they're leadership 9 for everything except orders. So it means you are going to have to take your orders on your leadership 7 or possibly leadership 8 of your Tempestus, your sergeants, which is the case. But... It basically means that for morale checks, you're leadership 9 all the time. They have move through cover, which is always nice, though I don't think it's that much use. Deep strike and voice of command. So, as I've suggested, your Tempesta Prime can issue orders. Uh, he does not have the senior officer rule, however. Um, and he may take melee weapons, power weapon, power fist. I see no value in doing this. Mary base his hotshot las pistol with a bolt pistol or a plasma pistol for free or for 15 points, respectively. Is there any value in this? A plasma pistol, yes, because you're getting higher strength and AP2. Bolt pistol, I think, is actually worse against most armies because it goes from being AP3 
Strength 3 AP 3 to Strength 4 AP 5 or 6. One star I may carry a Voxcaster. You know my opinion on Voxcasters. They are pretty much the best upgrade for a command squad ever. One other side I may carry a platoon standard for plus one to combat res uh, for 10 points. No, personally, I don't think you need platoon standards. Regimental standards, maybe platoon standards, no. One other side I may carry a medipack, 15 points. There is a small amount of value in doing this. I think you could do it and get away with it every now and then because you have that four plus armor. So you've got more chance of being able to have less feel no pain rolls to take, but you're still toughness three. So anything that looks remotely like an assault cannon is going to destroy you. No helping from a medipack. Up to four sounds that have not been upgraded with one of the above options may replace the hotshot las gun with a special weapon. Now, you get a little extra in terms of special weapons if you take military and tempestus. Uh, you do not get access to sniper rifles. And you do not get the demolition charge. They're for uh, normal squads and special weapon squads respectively. But you do gain access to the Hot Shot Volley Gun for 10 points. And the Hot Shot Volley Gun, I think, is one of the best weapons we've got for a lot of reasons. One, it's 24-inch range, so it's got a longer range than the 18-inch Hot Shot Las Guns. They're actually shorter ranged. So it's 24-inch range, strength 4, which means that it's really good at killing Marines, AP 3, salvo 2-4. So that means that if you move, you're getting two shots out of it. If you don't, you're getting four shots out of it. And that's absolutely insane. You point that at a um, combat squad of Space Marines, and they're pretty much toast. At least half of them are going to be toast. Because you're hitting on threes, wounded on fours, killing on fours. It's really good for ten points. I would always recommend taking one, unless you're running against an army like... Um... Actually, you're getting more shots all the time at a higher strength than your last gun, so it's always worth it, in my opinion. Um... And they may take a Chimera or a Torox Prime. I covered those in the last episode, uh, Troops and Transports. If you need to go and have a look at what they do. Torox Prime is unique to your Tempestus. Use it wisely, use it well, because it's blooming good. Your Scions um, are 12 points each, and the Tempesta that you take is 10 extra points. So they cost 70 points for a squad, 130 full size. Uh, damn. Uh, three, four... Basically, same stat line I mentioned earlier. Your Tempesta is one extra attack and leadership eight. No weapon skill buffs or anything. Same war gear as earlier. Uh, deep strike and move through cover, which is good. Uh, it means you can use them for outflanking, deep striking, or just setting up normally and sneaking about. Actually, no, wrong. Move through cover does not give you outflank. That's infiltrate and scout. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Um, tempesta may take melee weapons. Nope. Uh, bolt pistol or plasma pistol. Uh, I don't think you need to take a plasma pistol, but you can. Uh, one Scion may carry a Voxcaster. Absolutely. Good value. Up to two may be upgraded with a special weapon. Again, I think Volley Gun's one of your best, but Plasma Guns, Melter Guns, just think about the opponent you're facing when you come to pick your weapons. Otherwise, I would say a Volley Gun and a Plasma Gun generally will do you fine. Unless you know that it's a tank heavy meta. And again, Chimera or Torox Prime. Torox Prime is the better one, generally, but you could get good value out of a Chimera if you need to attach characters, so just Commissars. And that's the Elite section. So, in review of the Elite section, Ogrins are completely outshone by Bulgrins, who are debatably good, but they're a bit of a point sink if you're not careful with them. Ratlings are objectively equal to Veteran Snipers. Um... But you get more snipers in your squad and you're not keeping a bunch of las guns still. Um, so, small amount of value in them. Word Vein Psychers, I think, got worse compared to the old ones. Because I remember the, I think it was called Soul Purge Power, was absolutely brutal. It was a large blast that used the strength of the number of psychers in the squad. Which was brutal. Um, and Militant Tempestus, I didn't play with the old Stormtroopers, but you have lost your Doctrines which allowed you to do little special gimmicky abilities, such as re-rolling your scatter dice, uh, get pinning on your first turn and outflank, and some other clever gimmick. Um, so, are they better? Mm, debatably. You now have access to the Tempestus Command Squad, which is a big difference and a big bonus, but in terms of Scions versus Stormtroopers, 
I think it's debatable whether they're better or not. It's close. But I do think the Hotshot Volley Gun is a really good investment and the Torox Prime is a lot of value for them. So that concludes my review of the Astro Militarum Elite section. Uh, the next video in this series, of course, will be Fast Attack. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and leave any comments below. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael for Tactica Imperialis and I will see you again.